Thank you, Lord. God is good? And all the time? God is good. Hallelujah. Praise God. Welcome to those that are tuning in online. Uh, we just uh, want you to celebrate with us the goodness of God. And uh, we are going to... Your life is going to be changed. It's never going to be the same again. Hallelujah. That's what I heard about last Sunday. Somebody was so excited about last Sunday. He said, said that my life is not going to be the same again. And so... Uh, I'm, I'm excited for that because the Word is going to do that to you. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. I call this one vision casting today. Say that with me, vision casting. Because the biggest visionary is, who is it? Our Father, our Heavenly Father, who cast information in the form of 66 books uh, from beginning to end. And all of it has to do with taking a broken a, p a person, a humanity, people, and building them up and causing them to return to the highest place as he designed. And every scripture is God breathed and is there for a purpose, for instruction in righteousness, instruction for lifting, for causing you to ride on the high places of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm going to start out with a testimony here this morning. I'm not going to mention the names this was sent to me by somebody that actually used to uh, uh, do a little praise and worship leading for us back in our old building downtown. And this is the second time he's contacted me and thanked me that he received the word of faith uh, out of this building or was back downtown back then. And he had uh, several daughters. And uh, so he writes me again. This is a wonderful report. He says, hi, Dieter and Diana. How are you guys? It's been a while. I just feel the need to share this with faith pastors who understand the power of God. My daughter, Sarah, 33 years old, is in Mexico holidaying. She was in a bathroom. A lady fell over, turned blue, was not breathing, no heartbeat, basically dead. My daughter knelt down, laid... Um, I'm just reading the way he said, laid in hands and said, I speak life in Jesus' name over and over again. The lady came back to life, gasping her breath, opened her eyes. My daughter said she could spiritually feel the lady's spirit come back into her body. My daughter was so exhausted after this experience, she had to go home to bed. It physically and spiritually drained her. Uh, this uh, blows my mind just because uh, I want to share this with you and he names another evangelist and a few others who know God's power. And Sarah, um, that's the daughter's name, uh, just a regular girl living in Vancouver as a hairdresser. She goes to church there full of young people. Anyways, this blows my mind. I'm living in Costa Rica now. Blessings to you. On and on and on. And so... I'm excited about that because we had them in our church for a little while. So somewhere, words were input into her. That, so praise God for that. The word of faith which we preach. Amen. And you guys listen to online. The word of faith. And we're going to keep standing on the word of faith. We're going to keep casting that vision out of healing. Miracle Sunday is coming up. Bring people. Because we've had situations that were absolutely miraculous uh, happen already. And all it takes is more bodies, you know, and, and all it takes is more people coming. And, and uh, I, I believe there'll be a lot more testimonies coming in. So that's where you come in, just to be a part. Amen? These are the last days. And uh, I'll tell you what, if you've ever, have you ever watched The Simpsons before? No. But there's something, there's a connection there, an evil connection, and they forecast a lot of things that are happening. They forecast what happened in Maui with the umbrellas and, the, and the, where, where they came down with those weapons and, and burned up the town. And aluminum wheels melted. Never, never had to be over a thousand, how many, 1,200 degrees to melt those aluminum wheels and so forth. But that was all forecasted in the Simpsons. And so they have very grim things going on for 
2024. But guess what? We're not moved by what we see. We're only moved by the word which is real. And the Bible says in Psalm 91, uh, be excited because you're going to see stuff going on as we come close to the coming of the Lord. Um, be excited and get hot, plugged in like never before. I cannot emphasize that enough. Get so full of the Spirit of God that, that um, you'd be like Sarah walking into a bathroom and raising the dead. Amen? Amen. Amen. And that's why I read that today because that's Sarah. That, she's not Pastor Sarah. She's hairdresser Sarah. Yeah. Amen? Amen? And that's what's exciting. And, and, uh, and so the information you're going to receive is going to change your life over this pulpit. And again, there's good other pulpits in this town, but we, we, we welcome the word of faith, which we preach, which we learned at Rayma Bible Training Center down in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And uh, we want to continue sharing the uncompromising word of God. No compromise. I wouldn't be here. My mom would have had her legs chopped off. You know, so many testimonies that I've given over the last little while that uh, it personal, and all of them were directional. All of them caused me to stay, uh, us to stay on the track that caused us to be here today. Everything from how we got there. I bounced off the border. That I tried to go to Rama a year prior, and uh, I wasn't allowed because the school was not accredited. So I literally walked back to the Vancouver airport from Blaine, Washington, right over runways and everything. I, I still, they didn't have a fence back then or whatever. Sat there and wept in the airport because I couldn't go. It was <laughs> so we got married, got a house, went the next year, and so forth. But everything was, uh, there's so many different things that happened that the school got approved while we already were in motion to go to the Bible school, and uh, on a Wednesday, on a Thursday, the school got approved. On Friday, we arrived, that, the year that we got married and went down there. And so, you know, praise God. Our wheels, and we've got to get our wheels in motion, all of us. You know, when you go home off the serv- uh, after the service, desire God, desires. Father, you know, I, I mean, I'm just coming off a fast right now where, um, you know, I... I, I believe a fast, one of the aspects of a fast is it puts your body under and your spirit man raises up to hear from the Spirit of God. And I'm expecting things to change in, in uh, our personal lives, at Victory Life, all over the place. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Because we are, th- that's God's will. And if there's a block in the physical, if we're not hearing God properly, or something's not moving and shaking... Like I said, I follow a wonderful evangelist. Yeah, last year, after they did a three-week fast, and they prayed this year, uh, from Saturday to Sunday, they, they, they prayed all night. Or was it Friday to Saturday? They stayed up all night. And that's after three weeks of fasting. Last year, when they did that, they ended up with a $5.3 million building being given to them. Then an airplane was given to them to be used, a jet, three-engine jet. Then 23 acres was given to them by someone that could have sold it. But God moved. Hey, God says to give you these 23 acres to build a church. And offerings and things are happening and things are shaking. But it came after the fast, after spirit man first, and then everything falls into place. So I'm expecting that in our lives too. And today I want to cast some vision in your life, and I want to show you how uh, uh, this whole book is a visionary book of what God wants in your life. And uh, without, uh, without that, people perish. I've got a few wonderful notes on that. Um, we want to talk about that, going back to, open your Bibles to Genesis chapter 12, and Tom, get that on the board. Vision. Say this with me. Vision proceeds results. So we have vision. Again, this is only godly stuff. We're not talking about worldly stuff. We're talking about what God laid out in this book for you and me. And there's those that went before us that, that pardon me. Oh, okay. Somebody's saying something. Okay. There's those that went before us that are just like us. They're human beings that were in sin, that were uh, worshiping the moon, which Abraham was, Abram at the time. 
He was not hot for God when God came down and said, you know, I want to make a deal with you. And uh, so we want to go into that. But vision precedes results. Meditating on the Word of God until what it says has come to pass in your life and beyond. Uh, so not, I don't just want to meditate until I get the thing. I want to stay with the meditation like Dodie Austin, who still gets up early in the morning to read healing scriptures because God delivered her of cancer. She's supposed to die. But God, Dodie Austin is Joel, uh, Austin's uh, mother and uh, uh, healed of cancer. Amen. So you don't just, well, I got this now. Thanks. Thanks. You know, I mean, we've had people do that. Thanks. You know, thanks for, for praying for my son or praying, you know, thank you. And they're gone. Dangerous. Not because I'm something special, but the word is special. And if you don't maintain that, the enemy starts coming back in. And, and the Bible says uh, when Satan comes in like a flood, the Lord raises a standard. So we've got to maintain the word of God. Amen. So we'll we want to go to Genesis chapter 12. It says now in Haran, the Lord said to Abram, not Abraham, Abram, go for yourself. Go for yourself from your own, for your own advantage. Say advantage. Okay. See, God's trying to cut a deal here and, and bless the man. Out, away from your country, from your relatives and your father's house to the land that I will show you. And I will make of you a great nation. And I will bless you with abundant increase and favor. Favor, abundant increase. Anyone that's against the prosperity gospel uh, is, is a false teacher. There is prosperity in the word of God. First thing that God said, he didn't say, I want you to be holy and, and you know, you bum and all that kind of stuff. You know, walk upright. And he says, I want to bless you. Because the goodness of God leads to repentance. So you fall on your knees and say, God, you're so good to me. Help me, a sinner. Uh, and, and, make, and he did. He made us righteous. He washed us in his blood. There's nothing that, there's, our righteousness was as filthy rags. So was Abram's at the time. Amen. And so, and I will make you a great nation and I will bless you with abundant increase and favor and make your name famous and distinguished and you shall be a blessing. Hallelujah. A blessing. So not only intake, but a blessing, dispensing good to others and I will bless those who bless you, who confer a prosperity or happiness upon you, and curse them who curse you, and on and on and on. And in you shall all the families and kin, uh, kindred of the earth be blessed. By you they will be blessed. Hallelujah. And so this is vision casting. This is before it happened. So if you're here today and things haven't happened yet... Before it happens, there's got to be vision. God is laying out exactly what he wants to do to this man. He wants to take him from his family. Unfortunately, he messed up right there because he took Lot with him. He says, go by yourself. And, and uh, again, uh, he didn't. But God blessed him. But he had to get in print to the man something that, that, uh, of God's plan, God's vision, what he wants. And the man has to now take that and, as the Bible says in Joshua 1, 8, meditate on the word day and night. How many times? 24 hours a day. And again, that's probably impossible because if you have a conversation with your spouse, you're going to have to stop the meditation. You can't tune her out and yeah, 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 as you may. So as you're on, at working, you're going to have to stop, you know, meditating if you're doing other things. Understand what I'm saying. He's telling you, don't replace. As it says, do, uh, do not let the word of God depart out of your mouth, mouth. In other words, replacing it with words that are contrary to the vision. That's what he's saying. Don't replace it. Oh, I don't think so. Well, I can't. Well, I'm too small. I'm too short. I'm, you know, I, my, my life is over. You know, I've been divorced or whatever. You know, uh, no. Don't replace it with words that are contrary. And so... Meditate on my word day and night. What is meditation? It is bringing up that vision of the scripture that, you know, I've done a lot of different 
uh, ways of, of uh, in, inhaling the Word of God. When you drive, and I did, I drove a tow truck for Mario's uh, down to the coast. I could go through the whole New Testament almost in one 12-hour ride. You know, and you know how much I retained? Zero. <laughs> no, I mean, it's in there somewhere, but the retention. So that is not meditating on the Word of God. That is listening to it, familiarizing yourself with it, knowing, oh, that's in John, oh, yeah, that's in Acts, and all that kind of stuff, and, uh, which is good. There's nothing wrong with that. But there has to be a time when you take 1 Peter 2.24. Who knows what that says? Yes. Amen. By his stripes you were healed. Now, if you're dealing with something, this must come up in your spirit, man, and in your mind, by his stripes. you got to see those whips going on that back. you got to see um, the, what Jesus said concerning his stripes. 39 categories of diseases, 39 stripes. Every one of those, he says, I'll take them. And, and up will pop Isaiah 53. You'll see the cross. You see him taking everything and the pain that he suffered for you. And then you go back to 1 Peter 2.24, then back to Isaiah 53. And then you go to Matthew chapter 8, and you remember how the Holy Spirit, after all these healings, would say, himself, um, thus spoke the prophet Isaiah, himself took our firmities and bare our sicknesses through his stripes were healed. His stripes healed me. And you're walking the floor, and, and you have pictures in your because we think in pictures. If I say to you, three-legged dog, what just popped in your mind? Not, not words, three-legged dog, but you saw, you know, a three-legged dog walking down the street. Maybe one you hit with a car and lost a leg or something, but three-legged dog, wh whatever, right? You, you, you think in pictures. And so meditating, bringing it back up and thinking about it and putting it back down, bringing it back up is what is necessary for you to be um, have the vision, have results. If you go over to chapter 13, the whole thing is good, but um, just for time's sake, it says, verse 15, for all the land which you see, I will give to you. So he, what? All the land which you see, I will give to you and to your poster uh, posterity forever, and I will make your descendants and as the dust of the earth, so that if a man comes, can count the dust of the earth, then shall your descendants also be counted. Arise. So he's sitting on a field somewhere. Arise. Walk through the land, the length of it. See the breadth of it, for I will give it to you. What's he doing? He's He's, he's got him on a hill somewhere after Sarah made him breakfast. He's out there on the hill somewhere, and all of a sudden the Spirit of God speaks to him and says, see all of this here? I'm giving it to you. Whether he had a vision or whether it was uh, just the voice or whatever it was, uh, he is receiving and downloading the information. And God even says, go see it. Go see it right to the farthest corner and then arise and remember, you're going to have so many descendants. And he's scratching his head saying, but I don't have a kid yet. I don't have a kid yet. So he's, God is developing in him the vision of prosperity of everything that he wants to do. And nobody's going to come against him. The Spirit of God is loading that information into his heart so that he becomes absolutely strong and nothing will come against him. And guess what? In Galatians, the whole book of Galatians talks about you being hooked into this covenant that Abraham had. Amen? Through Jesus Christ. Amen. If that's Jesus, tell him I'm preaching here. So, <laughs> Amen. Verse chapter 15. After these things, the word of the Lord again came to Abraham in a vision. So this time he has a vision, chapter 15, saying, Fear not, Abram. Still his name is Abram. I am your shield, your abundant compensation, and your reward shall be exceedingly great. Wow. God is making a covenant with this man. And you know how he, he uh, sacrificed his own son and so forth. But God is blessing this man. God, when God gets a hold of people, your life is going to be changed. 
I believe every person is at the level of their constant meditation. Remember what happened to Job? For the thing which he greatly feared. I mean, it was megaphone fear. It was so big that it consumed him day and night, day and night. What is fear? Hello, Mr. Devil, I believe in you more than I believe in the, you know, God. That's what you're doing. And so everything that he feared, the kids, you know, all these different things, everything came crashing down as Satan came in. in and it says in Job 3.25, the thing you feared came upon you. What is he doing? What is this? Um, actually, that's wrong. The thing you greatly feared, Job 3.25, came upon you. So the meditation was so strong that it moved the hand of Satan in his life. So who's afraid of flying today? No. Who's afraid of driving their car today? Oh, the roads are icy. Well, drive slower. But don't get in a you know, plane too. I, I, you just, whatever it is, you know, don't allow the great fear to come upon you. Because, you know, I could just see little demons moving nuts and washers on an airplane because, you know, because you are in there with great fear. So thank God that there's Christians on the airplane that will keep those nuts together in those bowls. Every time I walk into an airplane, I put my hand on the, on the door before I get in, from nose to tail, from wingtip to wingtip. You're, we're going over. Wherever we need to go, we're going there. Amen. We're going there. We're going to win. We're not going to crash. Amen. It wasn't always like that. I literally, I remember one time I was a, a little kid and I was actually trying to push my head out of the window. I was really, <laughs> we're flying to Germany and I'm just like, I wonder if this window would give if I pressed, you know, and then it was, it was one of the foolish, but I was, there's fear of what if the wing came apart? Well, how many times do you hear of a, uh, an airplane losing a wing? One in a gazillion or trillion? But the fear of what? Because there's no help. It's just, you know, swirl through the ground and all that kind of stuff. Stop it. Anything that is fear. You know, what about fear of speaking in public? Fear of witnessing. Would you be able to pray for that lady in the washroom like Sarah? You know, fear of sitting up front. <laughs> no. I'm picking on Rodney today. Fear. What are people going to say? You walk into a room and, and what are people going to think of me? Remember, uh, Danny Moe was talking about that. You know, there's this, uh, he was um, uh, getting to know this girl, and uh, they were all waiting. There's this big room where they were all waiting, and he says the door to the upstairs uh, was from that room. And so as soon as you walk down those stairs, you enter that room. He knew everybody was looking, going to look at him. Is he okay for the, you know, the daughter that he's going to marry? He said, oh, the fear and the thoughts. What are they going to think? Am I too short? Am I this? Am I good enough? Are that, all that torment that, that, that could happen beforehand. And it's just the enemy. Every time there's fear, it's never God. It's always Satan. And it's building a vision in your mind. You are casting a vision, as Job did, lost everything. But then when he put his hand over his mouth and prayed, he got double back. Remember God, God of prosperity? I mean, if you read the book of Job, I, I, what do you have, 3,000 camel? I don't even know if Kelowna could hold 3,000 camel. There's enough hay. I make hay in the summer. If there's enough hay for 3,000 camel. Well, at the end, of he had 6,000. What do you do with 6,000 camel? You think God is a bit of ex an excess God? Yeah. You know, he wants you to bless. Uh, we already read that. Abraham was supposed to bless the people that he comes in contact with. Give him a camel or something. <laughs> camel is, it was kind of like their 18-wheelers back then. Give, you know, bring him some supply. Feed the hungry. Do something. God's blessed you. You bless back. Amen. And so... And Abraham, verse 3, this is back to Genesis chapter 15. Then Abraham uh, looked, you have given me no child. And a servant born in my house is my heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him saying, now, we're gonna, uh, now I'm going to say what God was thinking. He said, I've got to do something about this man. He's not hooking in. I've told him the descendants are going to be like dust. I've told him all these wonderful things. He's not hooking in. 
He says, um, he brought him out, so, and he, I'll go back to verse, and this man shall not be your heir, but he who shall come from your own body. I could see him rolling his eyes. Have you seen Sarah? Are you kidding me? She's in her 90s, and I'm, I'm clipping close to 100. Shall be your heir. And he, now what is he going to do? God's going to uh, go by what he has done to him previously. And he brought him outside his tent into the starlight and said, Look, now towards the heavens and count the stars. So he's like, one, two, three. I can't count that. There's trillions of them. You know, look and count the stars. If you are able to number them, then he said to him, you shall, uh, so shall your descendants be. So now what has he done? He's taken the man and said, uh, now you build a vision in your heart of these stars. From now on, um, I'm going to change your name. Next verse says, and uh, Abram believed, trusted, and relied on, uh, main, maintained steadfast to the Lord. And he counted it as, to him as righteousness. And he also he says, I'm going to change your name to Abraham from there. But think about it. From that day forth, he has a responsibility. How many have heard more than one sermon come over this pulpit? You have a responsibility to take that word and graft it into your heart. Most people just shake the pastor's hand and say, well, that was really nice of that. Yeah, very good. But who's going to pay my bills tomorrow? You know, who's going who's gonna to take care of this situation? You should see my boss. Yeah. No, you are like Sarah, spiritual agents, full of the Holy Ghost and power. Have you seen yourself like that? That's what Colossians is all about. The book of Colossians talks about Christ in you, the hope of returning to the glory so that you can walk and talk and meet people in the bathroom if they die and <laughs> lay hands on them, <laughs> not if they're just... If the Spirit of God moves you to do that, or in a train station or wherever you go, or at Costco, or like Jerry Savell in the mall, somebody says, I see a light on you. And the Lord says that, that uh, to, Jerry, uh, to the person talking to Jerry Savell says, you're going to pray for me because the Lord said there's going to be somebody with light on them and he's going to pray for you and you're going to be healed. Hallelujah. You're no longer common Joe living at... 259 Valley Road. That's my address, in case you want. You are not. You can't be. You're full of the Holy Ghost and power. We have on our mirror, it says, I'm anointed on a level the world is unfamiliar with, all for the glory of God. That comes from Billy Brim Ministries, uh, Reverend Chip Brim, and uh, great Great testimonies of people that spoke that daily. One guy had it embroidered on his car dashboard. He, I'm anointed, and he became a tremendous, successful basketball player. You know, um, that, that's what, what his giftings and callings were. It's, again, it doesn't just mean, you know, a spiritual, uh, you know, I mean, number one, number one. You're a child of God, and you're going to go around doing good and healing all our oppressed of the devil. But you could also be the greatest banker, the greatest baker, you know, the greatest mechanic in the world because you have got the Spirit of God. And how many times have we heard testimonies, R.G. Letourneau, of, uh, you know, how he made the bulldozer. It wasn't, they had trouble with making bulldozers, and then the Spirit of God said, d visited him at night and said, do this, do this, and that. Woke up in the morning and the anointing that through that dream got him what he got him, making that bulldozer and all those things. Amen. Hallelujah. Spirit of God moving. Amen. And so here you have the, all the different um, things that are needed to cause you to rise from today, from where you are, to be what God has called you to be. Hallelujah. That's exciting news. Amen. Hallelujah. That's exciting. And, and it goes back into everything. That's why we don't preach, you are just a sinner saved by grace. Because that word sinner will ring in your ears all day long. And guess what you're going to do? You're going to sin. You're going to sin. I'm just a sinner. And, you know, God's grace. So I, you know, no, you don't want to sin. You want to stop it. You can stop it because there's wages that you pay 
for sin, you want to be able to be free from the power of darkness. And because you're translated into the kingdom of his dear son. You're in a diff you're different now. You can't stop sin because Satan recoils from the, you know, he tries, but he can't get you. And so there's no go, 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 stop. Go, 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 stop. You know, like with, with stuff in your life or doubt or unbelief, which is sin. Did you know that? Yeah. Doubt and unbelief are some of the greatest sins that are out there, that uh, has God said. Remember how the spies were sent out and they were there and looking at the promised land, God says, I want to give you the land. And, uh, you know, they're all like, yeah, there's big grapes, yeah. But you see the giants, we cannot take this land. Slap, slap to God's face. Yes. And if you study that out when they said we cannot, it's like, God, we don't trust you. We, we don't that's the most dangerous thing. When God says do it, you can do it. You can do it. Yes. And so the spies came back and all of them, the, the, the 10 of them, they came back and that whole generation died in the wilderness except for the two that stayed with God and said, we're going to go over. We're going to make it. Yes. yes, we can. Yes, God said it. I don't know. They, I don't know if they thought they're uh, fighting skills would take down the giants. Did they know that all? Did they, were they, were, they couldn't have depended on the arm of the flesh. They had to have vision that, uh, first of all, that God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. They couldn't have meditated on grasshopper mentality. You know, yeah, I agree with those 10 other guys. We were really small. They, they had to say, no, no, no. No, a thousand times no. God said it, and I'm going over. Amen. Hallelujah. Go to, there's an interesting story here of vision casting. Genesis chapter 30. I don't think I gave you that, Tom. Genesis chapter 30. This is the account of Jacob when uh, he's being worked over by Laban, um, who is... Uh, uh, yeah, his boss, and he's trying to leave. He's trying to take his salary and go. And uh, so Laban keeps on moving the goalposts, uh, messing around with him and, uh, and uh, trying to take his salary away. Yeah. Amen. And let me let's read on from verse uh, 32 of Genesis 30. Let me pass through all your flock today, removing from, um, from it every speckled and spotted animal and every black one among the sheep and the spotted and speckled among the goats, and such shall be my wage. So later, when the matter of my wage is brought before you, my fair dealing will be evident and, and answered for me. Everyone that is not speckled and spotted among the goats and black among the sheep, if found with me, shall be counted as stolen. So Laban said, well, let it be uh, done as you say. The same day Laban removed the he goats and, and that were streaked, verse 35, and spotted, and all the she-goats, anybody want to be a farmer? <laughs> that were speckled and spotted everyone that had white on it, and every black lamb, and put them in charge of his sons. And he set a distance of three days' journey between him and Jacob, and Jacob was then left in care of the rest of Laban's flock. So, What's he doing? He's, he's uh, I don't want to use that word in church. But he's working them over. You know, he's he's uh, taking his wage again. Um, and he says, but Jacob stood, uh, um, took fresh rods. Watch this here now. Jacob took fresh rods of poplar and almond and plain trees and peeled white streaks in them, exposing the white in the rods. This is weird. Some people... Don't agree with this here, but I believe God gave uh, Jacob 
the idea of what to do. And so he's peeling these rods. What is he going to do with these rods? Then he set the rods which he had peeled in front of the flock in the water trough where the flocks came to drink. And since they bred and conceived what they came to drink, the flocks bred and conceived in sight of the rods and brought forth lambs and kids streaked speckled and spotted. Only God could do that. Only God could give Jacob the insight and the, and, uh, and again, some people, well, you know, that's folklore. No, this is Bible. Why would that be in the Bible? That that animal is looking at that, basically a vision casting by the animal. He's looking at these rods and all of a sudden his sheep and all these different things come out speckled and and um, with stripes. Now, he gives all the credit in chapter 31, credit to God, but there's still, I'm interested in a process here of vision casting, even in an animal. Obviously, God had to give him the info to do that, to, um, it, you know, it's not, not just Jacob doing his own thing. Obviously, something happened in that sheep to see himself, just like the Bible says, how do you see yourself? All of a sudden, after seeing those things, the animals came out spotted. Jacob separated the lambs, and as he had done with the peeled rods, he also set the faces of the flock, this verse, verse, verse 40, towards the street and all the dark in the new flock of Laban. And he put his own uh, droves by themselves and did not let them breed with Laban's flock. And whenever the stronger animals were breeding, Jacob laid the rods in the water trough before the eyes of the flock, and they might breed and conceive among the rods. But, the, but when the sheep and the goats were feeble, he admitted putting the rods there. So the uh, feeble animals were Laban's, and the strong were Jacob's. He's messing around, eh? Amen. But I believe God gave him the wisdom to do that. But the point being is Bible talks about vision casting, seeing. How do you see yourself today? Amen? Do you see yourself prosperous? Do you see yourself as a head and not the tail? Do you see yourself as holy? Every one of these you get to develop as the Holy Spirit leads you. He might say, wake up in the morning and say, you know, you are righteous. What is righteous? And you start going through the righteous scriptures that you are seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. You see yourself on a, on a stool beside the throne of God with Jesus and he's like, like my son, I five. Yes, you're not a sinner saved by grace anymore. That was a one day transaction. You are mighty in God now. You, we came inside of you. Now you go in all the world and preach the gospel. Not in your own might and power. But you go, take the word, take my spirit, and go into all the world. All right, I'm going to close with Joshua here. He says, again, vision casting with Joshua. I'm going to read verse 8 and then go back. The book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. Always saying the right thing. It's not burdensome. When you understand the principle, it's not burdensome. It, when, you, when it starts helping you, it's not burdensome. The first day in the gym, you might be aching a bit. But later on, you're like, yeah, I'm glad I went. Right? Maybe it's a week down the road, two weeks down the road. But you're glad you went. But go through and you're watching your diet, you're exercising, you're adding weights, you're doing all these different things, and it's creating a better result. Amen. So this book of the law shall not depart out of my mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night. And you, that you may observe to do according to all, say all, all that is written in it. For then you shall make your way, then you shall make your way prosperous. Because God's already moved. God's already, you're already in Abraham's covenant. God move. Amen. For us, New Testament, for Joshua, everybody, God move. Say God moved. 
For then you shall make your way prosperous. And then, not before, you shall deal wisely and have good success. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I, I like, uh, again, my, one of my favorite evangelists, he says, yeah, we feed 2,000 kids every day through a feeding program. I'm telling you, some of the greatest delight as a pastor is when we did the back to school bash, um, uh, when we did the Easter outreach, feeding 4,000 people, uh, pancake breakfast and giving out books and all these different things, games, prizes, all these different things, uh, back to school bash, feeding people at Christmas. I want back on that in a bigger volume. Yes. Amen. Giving out the 100 plus, about 120 different uh, items at Christmas this year to how many families? And, and you heard the good reports. You saw the good reports. People crying and saying, wow, we didn't, you know, just wow, thank you so much. We needed that. You know, that's what it's all about. How is that possible if we don't believe in good success? How are we going to do that? Amen. Hallelujah. All right. It says, so here's the vision that Joshua had, and then he was told, don't let it move out of your mouth. Every place upon which the sole of your feet shall tread, that I have given to you. And he's like, what? Yes, Joshua. He, did he have it already? No. He had to. They had to go in there and take it. But the vision was, it's all yours already. Just take it. Yeah. Wouldn't it be... Interesting, if the first day you got saved, boom, your whole body, you know, you get into shape, your hair grows back, you know, if you were missing some on your head, gentlemen, you know, like every sickness drops off, everything's perfect without you even getting in the Word of God. But that's not the way it works. Be nice. But that's not the way it works. Our spirit is born again, our mind is renewed daily, and our body must be, um, must be buffeted every day. Hallelujah. And we'll get there because this is what God is saying to you. Every place in the word of God, that I, every place upon which your sole of your feet shall tread, that I have given you. Every book in that New Testament is yours. Every promise is, is yours. 7,000 is yours. Verse 5, no man shall be able to stand before you in the, day, uh, in the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so shall I be with you. That includes your boss. That includes the guy waiting in Blood Alley. As when I went to school, there was a thing called Blood Alley. And that's where people bled when they fought. <laughs> and uh, it was a scary place if you were bought, brought up like me where you're not allowed to fight. No, turn the other cheek. <laughs> you know, just, and I th always thought, if I ever fought a guy, even if I could, knew I could take him, God would somehow intervene on his behalf because I'm fighting when I'm not supposed to. Yeah. Yeah. Was that stupid thinking? But I'm telling you, I was snared with that. Snared, just like I thought, yeah, there'd be a banana peel, I'd fall, and, and boom, he'd knock me out or something like that. Because God, you know, I'm a Christian and I shouldn't fight, and if I violate, like, I'll tell you what, that, maybe that's not your torment, but that was one of the torments I had. I just... I, I can't disobey God. Even, even so, my dad said, don't ever start a fight. You can end it, but don't start it. But anyways, uh, so it says, be strong. This is again. Uh, be strong, confident, and of good courage, for you shall cause this people to inherit the land. And uh, back to verse 5, whole Psalm 91 is given to you. I don't know what's going to happen this year. Totally, I hear prophets. I hear people saying things and so forth. But... Here's what I want to bank on. A thousand will fall on one side, 10,000 on the other. It's not going to come near me. What if it is a nuclear blast? Do you think that the fourth man in the furnace lost his, his protection? No. He's going to say, I don't, I'm, I'm not saying it will be, um, but I'm telling you, we're we're not appointed unto wrath. It's in our word salvation. Healing, safety, soundness, deliverance, and security. Write it out. Write it out. Get definitions. I've, I, I love, uh, you can Google it. You know, the word salvation. And that, I, I have built it to my spirit, man. I've built it in my spirit. I'm not going to die in a car wreck uh, because 
even a simple scripture like honor father and mother and it will be well with you all the days of your life. So I've lodged that one in my heart and I've done what I can to honor my father and my mother. Amen. Hallelujah. And so you build up a whole arsenal of spiritual uh, you know, fortification against what the enemy might try to do to people. And you're going to be the strong one this year as uh, things happen or the year past that. You're going to be the strong one, full of joy, full of the Holy Ghost, just able to stand against all the wiles of the wicked one. Read Ephesians 6. He says the shield of faith is going to quench every missile of the enemy. Every one of them. We really haven't fought much yet. We've got to pick up our shield and actually go to battle here. <laughs> you know, uh, really, in North America, haven't fought much like they do overseas. You know, where there's enemies all the time. Where the, I heard uh, one of the biggest evangelists says, church got bulldozed. Oh, well, build another one. You know, and, and uh, constant opposition. Constant, we're going to kill you if you preach the gospel. Constantly, constantly go out and they preach the gospel. I, I got a few guys online now that bug me a little bit and call me names and stuff like that, but pff, I've never been threatened. Uh, you know, like, like physically, somebody charging the pulpit or something like that. So it's like, like one of those things. But overseas, you can expect, uh, well, all Robert. Boom. Gun was pulled on him. It missed him. Um, all these different ones that... Uh, they said, uh, we don't know how that missed you, but it hit the tent behind you. But the tra trajectory, it should have taken your head off. But Spirit of God. John Hagee, same thing. Terry Mize, same thing. Guy pulled a gun, boom, pull it, boop, 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 dropped on the ground. Just go on. They threaten you. Uh, my, one of my favorite evangelists, when they kept their church open while others closed down, they had over 500 death threats. He basically said, uh, what time would you like to meet? <laughs> he's, he's quite a... What time would you like to meet? He says, uh, you know, like uh, I have, I have you know, schedule, whatever, I've got to keep here. What time are you going to come kill me? Nobody ever came. No, no. Oh, my goodness. All right, we'll do what you want, Mr. Devil. What time would you like to meet? Nobody phones ahead and says, I'm going to kill you. Or emails you, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. <laughs> yeah. Nobody does that. So they, you know they're just playing with you. And as soon as they hang up, they, they, you know, they realize they're just a bunch of idiots anyways. Praise God. Hallelujah. Vision casting. You're more than a conqueror through him that loved you. Hallelujah. In all things. So the word of God is real. It's alive. It's powerful. And today, John, uh, Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. This is, he is the only door that leads to salvation. The only door. There is no other door. Zero. So today you can call on the name of the Lord to be saved from what is coming on this planet and what will happen in the afterlife. Only way to heaven is through Jesus Christ. The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. So let's do that right now. From a believing heart, say, Jesus, I believe you died on the cross for my sins. I believe that you rose again from the dead. I confess you now as my Lord and Savior. I repent of my sins. You are now my Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Anyways, if you've made that decision this today, would you call us at 250? Amen. That's the Victory Life Church office. God bless you and have an amazing day rest of the day. Amen. Let's stand. Get you guys standing a little bit. I've been sitting again too long. Let's say our confession that we, we say at the end of the service. I am what God says I am. That's a truth. 
And, uh, you know, over there on that side and at the front entrance, we have these little cards that say who you are. You know, if you don't know who you are, there's a bunch of scriptures on that card. Take it if you don't have that. And take one of those lines. I think one of the first is, you know, I'm more than a conqueror. Well, what does that mean to be a conqueror, first of all? But it says you're more than a conqueror. And, you know, just it, like Pastor says, to, it, just to read it through quickly, what are you going to retain? Not a whole lot. But if you think about it and meditate on it and think on it and, and think on it again and, you know, when stuff happens, um, what does that mean to be more than a conqueror? Amen? If you're giving this morning, there's a container back there for your donations. If you're giving online... but blessings to you for giving. And, and Father, I just, I just bless each and every one of us this morning that um, there is blessing upon blessing as we do what your word says. And Father, as we retain those things that were spoken this morning and, and as we give and give throughout the week, that it says the windows of heaven are open. And so, Father, we thank you for that, that we have more than enough and we continue to be able to give to every charitable work there is and to be able to give to others. Our bills are paid in full in Jesus' name. So, Father, we just thank you this morning that, that we are blessed going in, we are blessed going out, that your favor is upon us and it goes before us and paves the way for those things that, that we need it paved for. Thank you for that wisdom. It says we have the mind of Christ in all things. And so, Father, again today, thank you for the mind of Christ in us, that it just comes forth, that wisdom from above. We, we prayed that on Friday, that uh, we have that wisdom, that reservoir of wisdom from above in any and every situation. So, Father, today as, as, as we go and... and uh, do our daily tasks and those things that you've assigned to us that you do go before us and you do give us that wisdom um, we know what to do at every every moment thank you for that thank you for that thank you for each and every one this morning in jesus name and everyone said amen read your bulletin there's prayer this wednesday life groups and if you got the email that I sent out, Saturday we're moving the offices. If you have power tools, bring your power tools, guys. We need just, uh, you know, some, some muscle. I know some of us ladies are pretty strong too, but we're moving, we're actually moving the offices uh, to the other location on Saturday. We have a moving truck. And again, if you need prayer, come to the front. We're gonna uh, uh, lay hands on you, agree with you. And for the rest of you, do not leave here without fellowshipping with someone, getting to know them. If you don't know what their name uh, is, please ask them their name. Some of you still don't know each other's names. And there's, there's food in the back. Amen? It is blessed in Jesus' name. All right. So be blessed.